Greetings. Uh, let us talk about isolation precautions uh, during endoscopy. And uh, let us take two case scenarios. And in each one, the most important thing is communication between the various team members about a particular case and what type of precautions need to be taken, whether it is contact, droplet, airborne or a combination of any of the above uh, and that is really critical. So, let us take two scenarios. So, the first one is contact isolation scenario. So, the nurse receives a call from the floor that the patient that you are going to assist uh, has C. diff or Clostridium difficile infection. This can be spread by contact. So, as soon as the nurse uh, finishes the intake, she needs to inform the team about contact isolation and go and place contact isolation signage on the endoscopy door. If you are assigned to assist in this procedure, when you go to the room and you see that signage on the door, the first thing you should do is proper hand washing for at least 20 seconds following the protocol. The next step is wear the PPE. The PPE that is required for contact isolation include gown and gloves. In addition, because you are going to assist in this procedure, you also have to wear a face mask and a hairnet and either goggles or a face shield. Once you complete the procedure, you remove your PPE and then when you come out of the room, the first thing you should do is again wash your hands. The best way to prevent hospital acquired infections is by maintaining proper hand hygiene techniques. So, let us look at another case. Uh, right now, we are in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic that is in May 2020. So, the nurse from the floor calls in and says, the next patient that you are going to take care uh, has GI bleeding and COVID positive. So, as soon as the endoscopy nurse completes the call, the nurse should inform the team about the COVID status and COVID positive means take precautions for both droplet, airborne as well as contact and put the signage up that is respiratory plus contact isolation. And if you are the technician, when you go to uh, assist, when you sign, when you see the signage on this door, the first step is wash your hands. Follow the protocol and wash for 20 seconds. Another alternative is using a hand sanitizer if your hands have been clean. So, after washing the hands, you should wear your PPE outside the room if the patient is already in the room. You should wear PPE to protect from airborne transmission. That includes from top to down, hairnet, face shield or goggles, N95 mask instead of surgical mask and uh, right now we have scarcity of N95 masks. We are supposed to do a single use, but because of reuse policy due to scarcity, uh, we also have been using surgical mask over N95 mask. Then gown, double glove and you also wear shoe covers. You go into the room, 
and this is the first time you are going into the room, make sure that you sanitize the surfaces with a disinfectant. And after sanitizing, when you go to the patient, maintain the social distance. And when these patients are brought in, they have a mask to cut down the transmission rate. Usually these patients undergo procedure with a special type of uh, oxygen mask or with endotracheal intubation to cut down airborne transmission. And before the patient is extubated, you clean the surfaces and then you get out. And what do you do to remove your PPE? Removing PPE is an art. You should not contaminate your hands or your face or your eyes or your nose while removing the PPE. So ask your assistant to help you remove the gown from inside out. Then remove your gloves and then hand sanitize. Once you come out of the door, hand sanitize and then remove your face shield. If it is to be reused, you clean the face shield and also hand sanitize. After that, before you remove your gloves, you hand sanitize again and then you remove your surgical mask from behind the head without touching the front. That is critical. And then remove the N95 mask without touching the front. And between every step, hand sanitize. And after you have finished hand sanitizing, after the last step, wear a surgical mask. And once you get out of the other room, get into the habit of hand washing to keep yourself safe. It is very important to keep in mind how to keep your hands clean and how to stay away from patients with airborne infection and how to wear PPE and remove PPE properly without disinfecting yourself and following a protocol. Thank you.